Hey everyone, Eric Stackelbeck here. This week on the Watchman Newscast, it's a crucial verse in Bible prophecy that you might have missed. Find out what it is and why it's so important for Israel and for you. This week, only right here on the Watchman Newscast. Hey folks, before we start, I just wanted to give a big thank you To all of our new subscribers to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube, our numbers are growing every day, and it's all because of you, so thank you for being with us, and we're bringing you the kind of cutting-edge, timely, relevant information that you just won't hear anywhere else. Much more to come in the days and weeks ahead, so be sure to join us every Thursday. Give us a big thumbs up and like what we are doing and tell your friends, your family members, your coworkers to subscribe to the Watchman News channel for such a time as this. Now on last week's edition of the Watchman Newscast on October 24th, you can go back in our archives and check it out. We went through really what is the foundational verse in many ways for Christian Zionism. That is the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. God says to Abraham, Concerning the people of Israel, I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you, and through you, all families on the earth will be blessed. Now, we showed you the power of Genesis 12, 3, how there is a long history of curses upon those who have cursed Israel and the Jewish people, and blessings on those who have blessed Israel and the Jewish people. But I want to focus this week on another Bible verse that you might have overlooked in all the discussion about prophecy concerning Israel. That is the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 2. Let's read it, and we'll start with the first verse, and then we'll go right into verse 2. Okay, God says, In those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will put them on trial for what they did to my inheritance, my people Israel, because they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. Wow, that is powerful stuff. And God is talking about a day that has yet to come. Remember, in that section of the book of Joel, he's talking about the great and awesome day of the Lord, which is sometime in the future, at the end of the age. Now, the name Jehoshaphat probably rings a bell if you know your Bible. He was the fourth king of Judah. The Bible says he was one of the good kings. But the Valley of Jehoshaphat, it's really a valley within a valley. It's located in Jerusalem, right outside the old city walls, and it's inside the very large Kidron Valley. Now, this is in the shadow of the Garden of Gethsemane, and the Mount of Olives where Jesus will set his foot down and return one day. We did an entire show there for the Watchmen in the Kidron Valley. It's a fascinating and a very large and pivotal place in Jerusalem, again, right outside the old city walls. And what does the name Jehoshaphat mean? It means in Hebrew that Yahweh has judged, or Jehovah, God Almighty, has judged. Now, a few thoughts here. Number one, Israel is very clearly still a major part of God's plan. He calls Israel his people, his inheritance forever. It's everlasting, folks. God does not break a promise. His covenant with Israel and the Jewish people is everlasting. And that means that Israel's enemies from the beginning of time, and we talked about this on last week's newscast, hey, the Babylonians, the Philistines, uh, Haman, the Assyrians, uh, the Romans, and all the rest, they will be in that Valley of Jehoshaphat. Hitler will be there. They will be judged on how they treated Israel and the Jewish people. Wow. Call me crazy, but it seems like Israel is a pretty big deal in God's economy. Guess who else will be there if they do not change course? Hamas, Hezbollah, the Iranian regime, and all these modern-day anti-Israel nations, and I believe individuals and organizations, will be there in the Valley of Jehoshaphat, and there God will judge them on how they treated his people, his inheritance, very strong words, folks, Israel. 
To me, that's the culmination of Genesis 12, 3. God tells Abraham, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. Not only have these nations and empires and individuals been cursed here on earth, they will be cursed in eternity. And look at the second part of Joel 3, 2. God says, they scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. We think of the Babylonians. We think of the Assyrians. We think of the Romans scattering the Jewish people, uh, the Babylonians, the Romans, destroying Jerusalem, scattering the Jewish people among the nations. But guess what? They are back. Against all odds, they are back in their ancient and ancestral homeland. Be sure to join our movement at Christians United for Israel, KUFI. We are America's largest pro-Israel organization, over 7 million members and growing every day for such a time as this. Go to cofi.org, you see the website, you see the phone number there on your screen. Call or click and join us today. And be sure, I mentioned it earlier, the Watchman television show. It's our 30-minute weekly television show. Be sure to check that out as well. That's Friday nights on TBN, 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Sunday nights on the Fox Business Network, 12.30 a.m. That's 9.30 p.m. on the West Coast, prime time on the Fox Business business network. Folks, I've had a blast bringing these two very crucial Bible verses to your attention these past two weeks. We live in Bible times today. God is moving, and you see it in these two verses. We have a front row seat. How exciting to be alive today and see this all coming to life before our very eyes. Prophecy is being fulfilled, and the story is just beginning. So be sure to join us here every week on the Watchman Newscast as we continue to bring you these kinds of reports that you just won't see anywhere else. Subscribe to our news channel, like what we are doing, and until next time, God bless you, and remember, never hold your peace.